here we are looking at the fourth week of problem solving and algorithms and flow diagrams. Uh, this week I'm not going to get you to draw a flow diagram, I'm going to get you to solve a problem in a different way. Uh, we will be looking at a river crossing and a camel's problem for you to complete and solve. So that's the intention for what we're doing today. Um, before we go into the actual task of what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm just going to show you a piece of work from last week. Now this is pretty much a model answer of what I required. If we look here in the flow diagram, we've got the terminus at the start and the end with start and stop. And all the way through the flow diagram, we have the arrow showing the direction of flow. So this is good. Now we shuffle the cards and we um, deal, uh, ask the person to choose one of the 21 cards, keep it to themselves, and we set count at zero. So this is initializing a variable. So here's the variable count, which can change, and at the start it's set to zero. We're going to deal the cards into three piles facing up and get the person to point to the pile with their card in it. And we stack the piles up with the card that's been chosen in the middle. And count equals count plus one. So here it is zero. So zero equals zero plus one. And our new answer for count is now one. So does count equal three? Well, it doesn't, so we go around the no. We iterate round here, back to here, and we go through again. So now count equals count plus one. So it's now one plus another one makes it two. It still doesn't equal three, so we iterate round again. And this time two plus one is three, so it does. So we've got a decision in the diamond with a yes, it does equal three. So we now go down this way, deal 10 cards face down, and the 11th one face up is going to say what the card should be, and we stop. So a really good example. There were many, many pieces of good work last week submitted to me. Uh, very impressed with many of your flow diagrams. This one I thought was pretty much spot on exactly how I would draw the flow diagram. So um, very good work here. So this week we're going to try and understand how we solve problems in computing. It's an important part of computer science. And we've got two ways of solving a problem. We've got brute force, which is just trial and error. Give it, give it a go, see if it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, we start again and try another way. Or we can try and represent the information uh, visually. And that's what we're going to try and look at today. So let's have a look. Here's our problem. It's a river crossing problem. And we've got a man here whose name is Fred he's in the green jumper. He's got two oars and a blue boat. And he's going to cross this river that is 10 metres wide. We've got bank A and bank B. Now Fred needs to get the wolf, the goat and the hay from bank B over to bank A. He has a slight problem. He can, it's only a small boat and he can only carry one of the items. We can either take the wolf, the goat or the sheep. But he can't take two items at the same time. So he has to collect one of the items to bring it over to the bank A. The problem being, if he took the wolf over and he left the goat and the hay, the goat would eat the hay and he doesn't want that. If he took the hay over, the wolf would eat the goat, which is obviously no good either. So the first thing he'd have to do is take the goat over. That way, if he takes a goat from bank B to bank A, he's left the wolf and the hay, which are fine together. The wolf isn't interested in the hay. So he's taken the goat over. He can leave the goat on bank A and he can go back for the next item. So how do we represent that visually? Well, here's the problem for you to remember and refer back to. If you need to, just remember what will eat what. Um, and we've got the information about Fred and his boat. The first stage of the problem is to work out what we need to know and what we don't need to know. So you could try different methods, but as I've said, representing the problem uh, visually, do we need to know what colour the boat is? Well, that's irrelevant information, so we can forget about that. Do we need to know the man's name? Uh, Fred, we probably don't need to know his name, it makes no difference to solving the problem. And the width of the river, it doesn't really matter how wide the river is, we know that we need a boat to get from one side to the other. So the relevant information that we do need to keep is what item is stored at each um, stage of the processing, stage of the problem. And we can do that by 
changing the items into letters. So the goat is a G, the hay is a H, the man is an M, and the wolf is a W. And we've got river banks A and B. And we can represent it in a table like this, bank A, bank B. And remember, they all started with the goat, the hay, the wolf, and the man all over at bank B. We can put another row in here because the man is going to take the goat over the river. So we can have M and G in the middle, which represents the boat in the middle. And then we're going to move over to A to have the goat and the man. And then we're going to leave the goat at A and the man is going to go back. So you can see how you can build this table up with lots of different rows representing where the items are at any one time. Your end point you're trying to achieve is having the goat, the hay, the wolf and the man all the way over at bank A. So this is your starting point, your start bit of the table, you're going to have lots of rows in between and this is going to be your end point. So that's what you're going to try and solve. I've now then got a second problem for you to have a go at and these are Tasmanian camels. Now Tasmanian camels can only walk forward but what they can do is they can climb over another camel. So here's the next problem to have a look at. So four Tasmanian camels traveling on a very narrow ledge encounter four other Tasmanian camels coming the other way. Tasmanian camels can never go backwards, especially when they're on a very narrow ledge because they will fall off. But the camels can climb over each other, but only if there is space for a camel to move into after it's climbed over another camel. So I'm just going to move to this bottom bit. We've got camel, 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 camel all together. Then there's a space and then there's camel, 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 camel. So we can represent this and I'm going to show you a partial solution. And that is here. We've got four camels in a space, then four camels. The first stage is for one of the camels to move forward. The next stage would be for this camel to climb over this camel and fill this space here. So now you've got three camels facing this way, one camel facing that way, this camel facing right, but remember he'll be here now, and then three other camels. And you've got to work out how to get the camels from one side past each other so they can carry on their journey. So I've set you a couple challenges this week. It really is the understanding about computer science and breaking a task down into smaller tasks, uh, smaller sections and visually representing it. That can be done in a spreadsheet with lots of rows and you moving letters around or you can do it on a piece of paper explaining how you're moving forward. It doesn't matter how you represent that solution to your problem but I'm looking forward to your work being submitted in the usual manner by sharing your answers in the portfolio to Mr Dowson myself. If you could do that to the same level that the work was last week I'll be more than happy. Enjoy your week and I look forward to seeing your solutions to the uh, river crossing and camel problem.